Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Super Bandit build. We are moving on again to our next big portion of this build. Video number seven, five plus two, is the wing video. Now I think this is gonna be a huge task on this plane. I think the wings are probably gonna take up two episodes. Don't quote me on that, we'll see how, uh, how it goes. So we've pulled the wings out, we've laid them out on the table, we've got our parts organized. We'll take a quick look at all that stuff, but Let's dive into these wings. All right guys, so we've got all of our wing parts laid out here. The wings definitely have the most amount of parts of this all. So we've got lots of wood structure, lots of random carbon things and wood things, and there's all the hardware for the wing package. So lots to do in this video, which is why it's gonna take probably the most amount of time. All right, so we've got our doors off here for our aileron hatches, sorry, off first. Nice and accurate with a pull saw. Now we will work on our main gear hatches next. This is continuation for the wing video. All right guys, so we've got both of the big cutouts here uh, done and also the aileron pockets. Now keep in mind if you are using a pull saw in a situation like this when you're cutting the carbon, this uh, pull saw is now dull. So we're gonna basically toss this guy in the garbage. Um, I did end up flipping this around and using the backside just like this. Uh, to finish my cuts because the front was so dull. So if you are using a pull saw in this scenario, you will basically have to throw it away after you've, uh, after you've used it. So that's where this one's gonna go. So we've got our cutouts all done and we're moving on to the next step, which is installing our little wood pieces. All right guys, so we picked up some aluminum plate today. Uh, this is part of a big sheet, but I just asked them for one inch pieces so we can get the, uh, this cut easier. Um, now this is almost the identical thickness to the, um, the existing flex plates. So we will be making our flex plates out of aluminum. So getting back on the manual here, we need to cut the doors loose from the entire area. So we'll be getting that done here as well too. Um, and then we will be installing our maple block. So let's get our doors done. All right, so what I've done here with the doors is I've taken a fine point Sharpie and drawn along the lines that we're supposed to cut out on each of these, uh, these panels. So we're gonna use a Dremel 409 disc to cut these out and Let's do it. All right, so we've got all of our little maple blocks installed in each wing, nine of them in total. Now we did use a combination of high saw and CA on these things. I don't just like using CA on these. I find it'll uh, tend to crack, especially when you're doing up that screw and everything's getting put together, you do up the screw and crack. So we have used basically high saw uh, to get it glued in place and then we use CA just to spot hold it. Now what we'll do afterwards here is we'll come back with our Dremel bit once this is all cured and just uh, sand down the CA and high saw that's kind of oozing out. So we've got those done on both wings. The other thing I went ahead and did was there's this metal I-beam structure inside here and we went and just put high saw over top of all the fasteners that were coming through. Um, I don't know if they've Loctited those in place so we'll just do the safe thing and put high saw on those and now we know those fasteners are not going to be able to come loose. All right, so we're going to let our blocks cure. So we're going to skip this step for now. We'll come back to this, get everything screwed in and all that stuff uh, in a little bit. So we're going to move on to flap uh, hinging. Now, this is pretty specific stuff here. So we're just going to follow these steps one by one. So first step here, block sand, wing, trailing edge at flap location. So we're gonna block sand the wing, trailing edge at flap location. And then it says, apply fiberglass putty to fill any imperfections in the block and sand again. So I'm assuming this area right here, because it's gonna be painted, uh, the flaps hinge down like this. So you'll see that area, that's why we're doing that. All right, so we've uh, filled the trailing edge of the flap with fiberglass putty. We'll leave that to cure and we will sand that out. Now what we need to do is we need to uh, block sand the leading edge of flap. Um, ultimately, this should remove 1 32nd of uh, material for the ply leading edge, which is pictured in there, that picture. All right, so we've got the leading edge of the flaps glued in place. These are a little bit tricky to get, uh, get glued in place. What I did was I got it all lined up um, put the, the 132nd ply plate down on the table, put 
CA all over it and then got this in the right spot, held it in place, sprayed some kicker on both sides. Uh, some did ooze through a little bit, so just took the razor knife and slid it between the two and it popped it off. So what we need to do now is we need to clean up our edges here. So what uh, the manual suggests is use some tape along here and block sand the 132nd ply. It is proud all the way around and that's the way it's designed. So you've got some, uh, some freedom of position there. So we need to sand that down and make it nice and flush with the flap surface. All right, so just a little progress update for you. Our wing flap uh, trailing edges are now sanded. You can see kind of the, the green hue to them there from the filler. So those are all ready to go. Our flap surfaces as well, those are all sanded and ready to go. And uh, actually what I ended up using to get rid of the excess material was the razor plane. So it actually works really well because it doesn't stick into the, uh, the primed surface. This primer is nice and hard, so it actually rolls over top of the primer just beautifully. So getting it uh, to trim off the uh, excess ply here on the edge was perfect. We just sanded out the end pieces on both sides. All right, so we're moving on to our hinges for the flaps. Now this is gonna be a tricky one because the manual is so-so, fairly limited, but we'll work our way through it. So we've pulled all of the uh, hinges off of the little board that it comes on. Of course, they've been sanded. We've sanded them all down. Now we need to tap those for a 256 size uh, hinge point and uh, we'll get these screwed together. All right, so flap hinges are assembled here. We've got our right wing, left wing. Now these are different and they are specific. Let's take a look at the plans and we'll see why. So your surface receives the outboard hinge. Your wing receives the inboard hinge. That's the same for all of them. And it's not shown here, but it's talked about in the manual, your screw goes towards the outboard side of the wing. So screw, screw, screw. So what we did is we're just following the manual here, but I'll explain this to you because it's quite specific. So I took my Dremel and we did a circular hole in each of the dedicated locations. And then what I do is I just take a hand file and we're just making our slot uh, basically the perfect shape to accept one of the, uh, the carbon pivots. When these are done properly, they should just slip in nice uh, and solid like that. So it's important that we don't make this hole any bigger because you want this uh, hinge to sit against the top or the underside skin and the wood is what kind of holds it in place. So. With that done, all three of our slots uh, fit the carbon horn or pivot point now. So now what we do is we go in and we just take the file and file out the skin. Uh, it's kind of a double profile because of what's actually sitting against it. And we just file out that skin until our backside of our, our hinge here is sitting flush with the plywood. And when that's done, the hinges are essentially fit. Okay guys, so we are ready to start hinging our flaps here. So we've lined up the flap on the wing, marked out our cutouts for the flaps. And the other thing I've done is looked at the plans, got this measurement right here for where our glue points are supposed to be. And we drew those out. So I'm gonna take my Dremel and just make our little glue channels right now. All right, so nothing overly exciting here. We're treating the flap exactly like we did on the other surfaces that we've already dealt with. Uh, the only difference with the flap here, obviously, is the hinge style is different. So we've got this all figured out, and uh, this particular flap, this is the right wing, is spot glued in place. And uh, this is what we're looking for. So we're nice and flush all the way on the underside here. Top side, nice and flush. And when we close this flap all the way, we are nice and level with the aileron. So um, it's definitely an accurate tight fit. Uh, I've got to add some pressure here to keep that up, but a uh, really nice looking system. And this is our movement here. So we can get as much movement as we can possibly desire. 
All right, so we've got both wings hinged now. What we need to do is we need to remove our screws on the flaps and we'll take our two different pieces apart and then we're gonna high saw both sides. Uh, same thing we've done on all the other surfaces. Now when we actually do the assembly uh, build or whatever you want to call it. Once the paint's done on this aircraft and we're doing the build on it, we're going to change these out to be nuts and bolts, uh, 256 nuts and bolts, uh, just to get rid of this stock system. Just something to remember for the future. But uh, let's pull these things off. All right, guys, it is the next day and all of our hinge points are extremely solid now, which is wonderful. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go in and we're gonna fill all of our areas that we need to fill. I just wanna get this done uh, and out of the way so we can move on to the next step, which is gonna be our ailerons, I believe. So we're gonna fill in not on the surface side because our other hinge... Okay, guys, it's the next day and all of our uh, pivot points are very, very solid, which is wonderful. So next thing to do before we do any filling and stuff is we're gonna work on our flap uh, actuation point, which is right here. And uh, we'll start to uh, work our way through the manual for that. All right, so we're ready to install our uh, flap actuation point here. So pretty simple install, actually. We just took the Dremel, got our hole opened up there. Now one little tip here that I do, anything that's balsa, I'm gonna soak it in thin CA. So for example, our end point here, when I make these holes, I, I soak them in thin CA, our end cap on our, uh, our surface itself, um, all that stuff, soak it in, in thin CA and it makes a big difference in how strong and rigid it is. So the, uh, the whole setup here with the uh, flap um, actuation point is really easy because they include this uh, template. So essentially we're just installing the horn, getting the template li lined up. Uh, we'll put some uh, high salt in here first, and then we'll just use some CA to, to hold it in place. So we're not gonna make a, a hole here to inject a high salt because we've got easy setup and access beforehand. All right, so with our, uh, our horns installed on the flap surface, now we're going to make our notch in the wing itself. So we've just got everything lined up here. Obviously the flap is not attached, we're just placing it in the right spot. And we're just going to mark out where the horn is going to come into the wing. All right, so we've got the flap back installed on the one wing, the right wing. Uh, so now we've switched the fasteners out to just standard 256 fasteners. Uh, these are probably the ones we'll end up using and we'll put a, uh, a lock nut on the other side. But uh, anyway, so we've switched those out from the stock ones. The other thing that we're doing here is the plans call for installation of a... Uh, poly ply or G10 uh, little cutout piece. So you're supposed to do a cutout in the top skin of the wing. Really don't want to do that. Um, of course, that piece would probably disappear in the uh, in the painting process. But why not try and keep it smooth? So what I've done here is rather than cutting that notch out, I just notched this area of the wing out right there, and we have plenty of clearance at this point for everything that's gonna be installed on there. And then what we'll also do is, so right now this is balsa with the fiberglass skin. So all we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna take some CA, some thin CA, and soak it into those areas. And now this is gonna be reinforced so we won't have to do that silly uh, little G10 triangle on top and it'll keep the beautiful shape of the wing. All right, so we've pulled the flaps off of the wings, set those aside. We need to let the hinge point or the control hinge point cure. Uh, next step is the ailerons. So the first step in the ailerons is to remove the flaps from the wings, which we've done. Next step is to outline the panel lines just as we've done on every other surface. And now we're supposed to cut these off with our pull saw. So. I think this is gonna have balsa all the way through, so this is gonna be definitely a bit of a challenge. And I need to read the manual and see, because we're supposed to cut this, it would make sense to cut this straight down. So I'm not entirely sure how we're gonna accomplish this yet, but uh, let's figure this out. Okay guys, so this was definitely the most stressful part of the wings, uh, cutting this aileron off and trying to keep, ooh, that was really bad, and trying to keep the cut straight up and down. So we've got a bit of a wonky situation there. Now, fortunately, BVM thought about this 
fortunately. So when I cut this aileron off, we had about two millimeters of extra material coming past or uh, pay out past the trailing edge. So we don't want to leave that there. We want to sand this down to a nice clean line, which I have done. But what that allows you to do is to level off this entire area, which is nice. So that is um, great to see. And the other thing too is you're also removing a bunch of material off of the leading edge of the aileron surface itself. So we've got a bit of a wonky cut here. We're gonna square that off nicely and uh, then they ask for a significant amount of removal. Uh, just to look at the manual here to remove uh, material from the leading edge of the aileron. So a quarter inch um, at the inboard end and 3 16 of an inch from the leading edge of the tip. So quarter inch here at the thicker part 3 16th at, at the uh, trailing or the, the tip. So uh, pretty significant significant amount that we're cutting off here. And then just like we did on the, uh, the other surfaces, we'll be gluing that piece of balsa over top of the aileron. Princess Nez, keeping the plans warm, hey? <laughs> okay, so a couple things we also wanna do to this uh, trailing edge of the aileron area try and capture this on camera. Number one, we're gonna fill this in uh, with some fiberglass putty. So the big gap right there, the gluing gap. Um, probably put some CA in there first just to confirm and make the balsa all nice and rigid. And then the other thing we're gonna do is at the tip there, when I cut that off with the saw, uh, we've got a bit of a, a funny little downward angle thing there. So we're also going to fill this in and sand it flush with fiberglass putty. Now I'm not going to do that until we get the other wing done because we'll probably have some to do on the other wing as well. All right, so I'll share with you guys uh, kind of the best way. I think this is how the manual explains it to cut these wings. So what we've done, of course, is we've marked out our, our panel line there, used a pull saw or a razor saw to get almost all the way through. Uh, it's a little inconvenient on the, uh, the aileron here just with the way you're cutting. So you're getting uh, most of the way through and you don't wanna be pushing through the other skin, otherwise you're gonna delaminate it a little bit, which can be fixed, but if you don't have to do it, don't do it. Um, the end piece here, try and cut it as much as possible. And then you take a razor saw that doesn't have the handle on it. So this is, this is actually the dull one that uh, we use to cut the doors. So I just use snips and cut this off the actual handle. And now we've got a little pull saw without the blade. So the ends of this are very dull, but for a scenario like this, um, you're just going in here and you're, you're following your, your line that you've already cut and just sawing through it carefully. So, All right, so we've got both of our aileron surfaces uh, good to go, ready to hinge. So we have marked them as per the plans. And you can see there the two hinge marks. And here they are on the plan. So we've got hinge number one, hinge number two, and we've got hinge number three. Now hinge number three is the actual control arm, which is these guys right here. So there will be a third hinge, but um, it's not the typical hinge that we're used to. And then what we do is we cross-reference the plans and we can see which uh, hinges are which. So we've got these guys, which are the long ones. Uh, those go on the wing side, the short ones go on the surface side, and then we'll have those two and those two for our inboard hinges. So as we have done on all of our other surfaces, we are treating the ailerons exactly the same. So we've tacked glued these in place through our holes with some CA. We've got our wire run all the way through. Now, I did not do a long cutout like is shown in the manual. So the manual shows doing a really long cutout down to about here, a little bit shy of where I have it marked, and I didn't do that. So what I did was I injected some high saw into the, the opening, uh, covered the control horn with high saw, sunk it in place, and I, uh, I did that one last. So I did these two first to get them lined up strung our wire through and now everything is lined up perfectly. Left a little gap at the back here to use some CA to, uh, to hold that in place. So it's held in place. And a couple important things is obviously the, the, uh, the position of this horn is fairly important because you're going to have a clevis on there. So you can't really use the surface 
as your measuring point because that surface angles. So what you want to do is just use your wire here. So I've just run the square on the wire and it's a little hard to see, but you're looking for a 90 degree angle from the horn in relation to the wire, which is your pivot point. So this side is all tack glued in place now. So what we'll do is we'll pop our wire out. There we go. And now, as we've done before, we'll just use high saw and inject it in our gluing holes. All right, so with the wings curing, we're gonna move on to a couple other steps ahead of this. So what I'm looking at doing next is gluing in the mount for the flap servo. Now, I've looked through all of our stuff, all of our supplies, and that's the one random thing we are missing is our flap servo plate. Uh, apparently it's made from quarter inch ply uh, and we don't have one. So here's all of our parts from our wing kit and nothing in there. We've got our mounts fortunately for our servo which is great but uh, we're missing the ply plate. So anyways I'm going to trace one of those guys out and uh, then we'll get a couple of those cut with the new bandsaw. All right guys, so I'm making the mounts here for the flap servo. Now I had a little piece of quarter inch plywood, which uh, I've been able to make one out of. I uh, made the template, obviously traced it out on here, cut it on the bandsaw, sanded it down nice and uh, beautiful. So we've got one mount successfully done. And what we need to do is I don't have any more quarter inch ply. I've got some 3 16 but that's just a little bit too narrow. So what I did was I took two layers of 1 8 We're going to glue these together and then we'll be able to cut out our piece from the new quarter inch ply. All right guys, so we've got our, uh, our flat servo mount here. Now I modified this a little bit from the stock one because this would get in the way of the uh, the servo arm or the linkage arm. So I just uh, sanded that down a little bit. It used to come like, like that. So anyways, we've got high saw on the underside of this. Now one thing I like to do when I'm gluing something flat to a wing like this is I'll put a bunch of high saw on there and then I'll heat it up with my heat gun. What that does is it makes it very, very runny uh, for a very short period of time. And it allows this to make sure it sits down a little bit tighter and more accurate. So it uh, allows that high saw just to flow, I guess, is the best way to say it. And then what I'll do is I'll take some medium CA and we'll run that all around the perimeter and that's going to lock it in place. And then we don't have to worry about any funky uh, clamping system or anything like that. There we go, so we're gonna let this stuff cure. Now I'm not going to put my servo mounts on this yet. We've got full access to uh, screwing this servo down. So we're gonna wait for the build to screw our servos down. So eventually this flat spot here or non-punctured area will mount to the servo and the side with the holes in it will mount to the uh, the plate mounted in the wing. So one thing that's quite nice about the BVM primer that they use is it uh, doesn't allow anything to stick to it really well. So if you get CA on here, it actually wipes off quite well. So when you're dealing with areas that we've used the polyester filler on, uh, if you're careful, you can take a plane like we have here and you can clean up pretty much all of it around the, the hole that you've made. <clears throat> just like that and then we only have that little tiny bit to sand. Alright so it's flex plate time so we've got our carbon flex plates we've drawn out the or traced out the flex plate on a piece of aluminum and we will use our lovely bandsaw with a bimetal blade on it and uh, we'll trim out the flex plate. Alright so we've got both of our flex plates done or I guess all four of our flex plates done for our gear. Now we're doing things a little bit differently here uh, this would be kind of the stock setup where you've got your flex plate and then you high saw the nut onto the back of the flex plate, whether you're using carbon or aluminum. So we're going to go a little bit above and beyond and we are going to do a couple things here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our flex plates off and we're going to glue the carbon on the underside or gear side of the flex plate. 
So that side that it's sitting on right there. Now the reason for that is when this is all together like this and glued together with high sol, we are going to tap these aluminum carbon combinations with a 632 uh, tap instead of the stock 440. So the 440 hardware is 440 nuts and everything right there. We're switching everything to 632 and then we don't have to run nuts. We can just have that stuff as threaded pieces. So one of the changes we're making, obviously it's going to take a little bit more time because we've got to high saw these onto the flex plates and then we just have to let that cure and wait. But it's going to be a nice little simple upgrade. All right, so we've got all of our flex plates slash carbon reinforcement. Uh, glued together. So we've just bolted these together using the 440 hardware and I, this one here I've just cleaned up the edges uh, from the high saw. So we'll do that exact same thing to the other uh, three. Alright guys and we are going to end wing video number one at this point. I don't know if we will wrap up everything on the wings in video number two, but that is the goal. So we'll see what happens. Still lots of work to do on these wings, but we have made some really good progress. Uh, next video, we're gonna start off with finishing off our aileron surfaces that we did in this video, and we'll start with getting the gear plates done as well too. So thanks guys for watching. We are coming to the near end of this assembly video, build video. Um, of the BVM Super Bandit. And uh, we have one week from today to be ready for paint. So lots of work to do in the next seven days. Thanks guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, list them down below and we'll see you in the next video.